All was a battle with something else. Mm -hmm. But Lord, we are living in a sin cursed world. Oh, yeah. We know, Heavenly Father, that you are the only one that knows the way through. Yeah. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would just continue to lead and guide us in the way that you would have us to go, Lord, and, and help us, Lord, each one to fulfill our assignment in this world. God, that we would do the things that we are supposed to do, the very things, Lord, that you have placed us here to do. That we would do it, Heavenly Father, in a manner, in a way that is pleasing, a way that is acceptable in your sight. Yes. Well, Heavenly Father, we pray for those who don't know you in the pardon of their sins. Yes. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who are sick and those who are shut in. We pray for those, Heavenly Father, that don't even have the mind to pray for their own yes. sins. Yes. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we petition the throne of grace, God, we, we petition it, Lord, knowing that we are nobody. Yes. Knowing, Heavenly Father, that the only thing that makes us relevant is your spirit. Mm -hmm. It's what you've done on the cross, Heavenly Father, that it even make our existence yes. worth anything. Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that. And now, Heavenly Father, we pray, God, that you would bless us according to your love and kindness, mm -hmm. according to your tender love and your mercy. We claim victory mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Yes. And count it as already done. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Thank God for each and every one of you. We just give him praise. <clears throat> A scripture reading today, I've got a couple of scriptures that I want to read. I've got several scriptures that I want to look at, but a couple that I would like to read. One coming from uh, the 19th chapter of 1 Kings, the 17th and the 18th verse, and the other one will be coming from Proverbs uh, 2, before we will uh, take our text from 5 and 6. <coughs> Uh, it says, and it, and it shall come to pass to him that escaped the sword of Hazel to Jehu slay, and him that escaped from the sword of Jehu shall Elijah, Elisha slay. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel who have not yet bowed their knees to Baal. A mile which had not kissed him. Proverbs 2. Thus, trust in the Lord with all of thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding and in all of thy ways acknowledge him he shall direct thy path. Mm -hmm. That is our subject. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. In all of our hearts. Mm -hmm. Lean not to our own understanding. Mm -hmm. God will direct our paths. Hebrews 12 and 2 says that God is the author and the finisher of our faith. Mm -hmm. In other words, this book that we live by, that teaches us and guides us how to operate and how we should function, that God is the one that authored this book. And he is the one that will finish it. You see, we are still in the midst of the story. The scripture says we live our lives as tell that is being told. Mm -hmm. And the story have not yet been concluded. We're still in the midst of the story. John said in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. And the Word was God. John lets us know that this is God's story. Mm -hmm. I hear it. Reverend McClurk has said this is not about us. He said it's about God. Mm -hmm. God has invited us mm -hmm. 
He's opened up the door and allowed us to come into fellowship with himself. Mm -hmm. We give him praise and we give him thanks. Yes. As I looked at the story of Elijah, most of us are familiar with Elijah's story, and while it's a long story, we will not try to tell the whole story. Because it's not about the whole story, it is about the message. Mm -hmm. It is about the message that God would like to share with us today. And how it was that the nation of Israel was in a bad place. It was in a bad place to where the worship had not stopped. But the honor of God in worship had stopped. Mm -hmm. The men was going through form and a fashion. They was going about to establish their own righteousness mm -hmm. and not submitting themselves under the righteousness of God. And Elijah was the prophet at that time. He was the man that God had sent upon the earth to teach, to preach, to counsel, and to instruct. But it seems that the world was not interested in what God had to say. And the scripture lets us know that how that if the situation was not bad enough, that King Ahab married Jezebel. The instruction that had been given to the children of Israel coming out of Egypt was not to man up with those who was not of God. The message was that they would change you. They will change the way you look at life. They will change the way you see God. Show sure off Ahab had married Jezebel and become tied up in trying to serve two gods. I thought about how it is that we live in this day and time and, and how we seem to have chose the God of science the God of technology. Mm -hmm. Well, all of these things are good and they are important for us if they are used right. right. But the scripture said, Thou shalt have no other God before me. Amen. They should never be placed above the God of heaven, the God of creation, the God of the one who has brought us here and give us his blessings to live on. As we look at the scripture, we see that Elijah had stood on my Carmel. And he had challenged the, the prophets of Baal. And how it was that Elijah had overthrew the 400 prophets of Baal. And God was proven to be God. And Elijah says to the nation, if God be God, then follow God. But if Baal is your God, then follow Baal. And when God proved himself, the people's cried out, the, the Lord is God. God is God. And Elijah felt that he had made a great move. He felt that he had made a great change. He felt that he had done something really worthwhile. Because you see, at that time, there had been a drought upon the earth for three and a half years. Elijah prayed that the rain would be held back. And God held the rain back for three and a half years. And at this move, at this point, at this time in history, it was time now for God to end a three and a half year drought. Mm -hmm. And the three and a half year drought is ended. And God and Elijah prayed and God began to prepare them for rain. So the rain is fixing to come. And Elijah told Ahab, you better get down here for your chariot and stuff. Because the rain is sure enough getting ready to come in. Mm -hmm. And Elijah was so excited about what God had done. He was so excited about what he thought God had done. But, he, but Elijah misunderstood what he didn't understand. Well, just how deep the roots of evil run. He made the mistake of thinking that God would reform the nation through him. 
That he was the man that God would use in this, in this reformation. So Elijah runs to Jezebel's gate. And Ahab goes in and he tells Jezebel all that Elijah has done. And Jezebel says that, but this time tomorrow, she took an oath on herself that Elijah would be just as dead as my prophets. And I thought about how it was that if Elijah once who stood as such a great and powerful man of God, how it is that the words of this one woman cut him to the heart. How it knocked the spiritual breath out of him. And I thought about one time that, that I hit one of my brothers and I was running from him. And I ran and climbed up a tree that I climbed up in so many times. And I grabbed and swung on a limb that I, I swung on so many times. And that day the limb broke. And I come down, me and the limb come down and, and it knocked the breath out of me. And my brother just stood there and looked at me like that. Well, that's, that's good enough for me. <laughs> I thought about how Elijah must have felt when he had the breath knocked out of him. He had his spiritual breath knocked out of him mm -hmm. because he thought something that would happen that was not going to happen. Because he misunderstood the depths and the roots of evil. Because he misunderstood the fact that everybody that hears truth, everybody that witnessed miracles, Everybody that has a connection with God will not change. Amen. There are hearts that are cold. And Elijah, by him not understanding the roots of evil, the roots of evil had even crawled to the point that they had wrapped around his heart. They had wrapped around his heart to have him to think that he is God's great reform. Mm -hmm. When it didn't happen, Elijah fell into state of depression. He fell in a great state of depression. He said, God, it's enough. He ran for his life. He ran from Jezebel. And he said, Lord, it's enough. Take my life. It's better for me to die than to live. And Elijah runs and he, and he goes into a cave and he lays in a cave and he's feeling sorry for himself and he, he's crying and he's feeling sorry for the nation of Israel. Because things did not turn out the way he felt they would. And Elijah told, and God told Elijah to come out of the cave, but Elijah didn't come. And God sent an earthquake. And the scripture said the earthquake came and broke up rocks, but, he, but, the, the, but God was not in the earthquake. He said he sent a fire, a fire, but God was not in the fire. But then the still small of God, boss of God spoke, called Elijah out to come. And the scripture said he came out. And he stood at the mouth of the cave. And God asked him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah was running on his own. He was moving on his own accord because things didn't work out the way he thought they supposed to work out. And Elijah said, I've been very jealous over, over, you, over your people's God because your people's have forsaken you. In other words, my heart has been broken. My spirit has been dampened. I've been hurt. And you see, it's nothing new. That being hurt is not a new story. It is a story that we all share. It is something that we all go through from time to time. But Elijah had come to this point where he says, I've had enough. And as God talked with Elijah, he come to conclude that Elijah is done. That now I'm fixing to have to carry Elijah's home. But before I take you home, Elijah, I need you to go and not a king over Syria. I need you to go and anoint a new king over Israel. And I need you to go and anoint a new prophet in your position. Because God wanted Elijah to know that the journey did not start with him. And it would not end with him. God needed Elijah to know that God is the author of the book. And 
the book ain't finished yet. That we're just in the middle of the pages. And God know that he needed Elijah to know that I've got 7,000 men who have not bribed their knees to bail. Oh, I think, I know you think, Elijah, you're the only one that's serving me. I know you think, Elijah, that you're the only one that can bring about reform in the world, but I've got somebody else who believes, Elijah. I've got somebody else who has not bowed down, who's not humbled himself, who has not accepted idolatry. Got someone who have not given their life to experts, who's not given their life to science, who have not given their life to technology and think this is the way of life. When I look at the scriptures, I look at St. John, the 20th chapter of St. John, and I find after Christ had been crucified, and after he had risen the third day, the disciples is locked behind a wall. They are behind the wall and they have locked the door. Why are they behind the wall? Why do they have the door locked? Because they are afraid. They are afraid because you see, the way they thought God operated was not the way that God was operating. <clears throat> they are afraid because the way they had envisioned Christ and what his purpose was, they had missed it. They are afraid. They are, they are so set on their own mindset. They are so defeated by their own understanding, by leading to their own understanding. Their understanding had led them into a place where it cannot be anything for them but a trap. And when we ever lead to our own understanding, our own mind, our own thought, it can lead us to nowhere but a trap. And they found themselves in a trap. They were so caught up in what they thought that even when Jesus trying to tell them how the book is written, they said, Lord, no, that won't happen to you. They could not even listen to the Lord who wrote the book. And somehow or another, they thought the story was all about them. And somehow or another, they thought the story would end with them. They could not believe that evil ran so deep, so deep that men would crucify the God of heaven, but they did. And they couldn't believe it. And now, they said that they're afraid. All of the time, the Lord is telling them, the Son of Man must fall into the hand of sinful man and be crucified, rising on the third day, but they couldn't believe it. Now they sit behind the walls and they're afraid. But the Lord appears before them. And he says, peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, so do I send you. Oh, I, I give God praise. I give him praise, church. Because when I hear this word, when I hear what the Lord says to those disciples, I know that we are products of those disciples. I know we are as an extension of who they were. I know that as God called them that day and said upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I know that we are a part of that church. I know that he is telling us, as my father has sent me, so do I send you. We must continue to realize that we are the body of Christ. We must know that we are just a part of the book. We are not the author, neither are we the finisher. We are just part of the story. The story has not been completed yet. We are still in the midst of the story. Go and tell somebody about Christ. Go and tell somebody that he loves you. Go tell somebody that he is the Savior of the world. Don't make the mistake of leaning to your own understanding. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your paths. The church is becoming something else. 
Oh, here the church. The church is becoming something else. You see, because whether we like it or not, whether we agree with it or not, it's written in the book. Mm -hmm. And the book tells us that there are coming a time when that which is called church will not be church. It will not be church. Why? Because it will not be spiritually inspired. Mm -hmm. Because man will forsake the spirit of God and he will lead to his own understanding and the church will become a worldly church. Our message will be come from the world, not inspired from God. Our songs will be inspired by the world, not inspired from God. Yeah. And if you look and if you listen, you know what I'm talking about. The scripture talks about a time of a great apostate. What is apostate? It's when men have a form of God, but they're not the power of God. It's when men will talk about God. They will act like they believe in God, but they will not serve God. They turn their backs on God and continue to walk by their own understanding. And this is where we are headed, and we are already coming to that arena. And what I'm saying to the church, keep your hand in God's hand because there are so many things that sound good that God is not in. Yes, Elijah thought God might have been in the earthquake, but God was not in it. He thought he might have been in the fire, but he wasn't. There are so many things that seems like it is God in this world now, but God is not in it. There are all the schools of divinity. The man has created his own schools to teach God. But so much of it, God is just simply not in. God is the author of the book. He is the writer of the book. He is the finisher of the book. And the book ain't done. Tell your children. Tell your grandchildren. Amen. Amen. Tell them about Jesus Christ. Tell them about the Lord who inspires men from heaven. Lest they become a part of a church that don't know God. Amen. Lest they become a part of a church that has turned their back on God. Hear what I'm saying, church? It is our job to be the light of the world. It is our job to let our light shine. It is our job to be the spiritual force in the world right now. Mm -hmm. We need to show it to the young peoples because they are being lost. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're being destroyed. They are being targeted. And they are being hurt. And they are being damaged. The scripture tells us that when Pharaoh came into power on my dome, it said there came another Pharaoh who didn't know Joseph. That may seem like a, a simple statement, but what the statement is actually saying that God had raised Joseph up in a way that he made rules and laws based upon his relationship with God. There was growth and there was prosperity happening based upon the relationship that Joseph had with God. There was rules and order set in place based upon the relationship that Joseph had with God. Mm -hmm. But then there came another Pharaoh that raised up and he said, I don't regard Joseph. I respect him not. I don't honor his rules and I don't honor his laws. And we read from that point on where Israel become enslaved. And when a people turn their back on God, they, they can't be nothing but slaves. Mm -hmm. And when I look at where we are at now in this nation, we are in a bad place. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know the church that you are still the light in the world. Yeah. You are still the one that God is looking to. You are still the one that, that, that makes a difference. And don't think, don't think that you're just a small thing because you're not a small thing and what I'm trying to say as I get ready to go to my seat that we need not get tied up with an institutional church 
But we need to make sure we are lined up and know ourselves as the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. We are his body. We are not an institution. We are the body of Christ and Christ is our head. Mm -hmm. And the body takes charge and command from his head. So I'm saying to us, church, I'm saying to us, maintain the spirit of God. Amen. Maintain the order that you walk under the command of God. Because there's another world, there's another church that's growing up right beside this one. And let me show you something else as I go to my seat. I was thinking about something. I was thinking about the scripture talks about the beast. The beast that rises up and we often talk about this beast. But the scripture said there is another beast that rose up. A second beast. He's the one that we don't see very much. We don't, he's the one that we don't talk about very much. The first beast is political. The second beast is he is a spiritual representative. But he's not guided by the Spirit of God. The scripture said one beast rose up out of the sea. It says another beast rose up out of the earth. And you know what it meant when he said he rose up out of the earth? It meant that he was earthly. He do great signs and great wonders. Even if it was possible, he could fool the very elect of God. But he's not spiritually inspired. He is earthly. All of his knowledge, all of his understanding, all of the counsel he gives, all of the works that he does, they are earthly. And what the scriptures is letting us know that if we follow earthly things, we will fall by earthly things. Mm -hmm. Say again, as Reverend McClurkin have already said, that the door of the church is open. And the scripture says, whosoever will, let him come. Amen. Amen. And if God has spoken to your heart and you have not answered that call, I would encourage you mm -hmm. to answer that call. When we look at what we are dealing with now, we are dealing with COVID. We are dealing with a time where it seems like evil is good and good is evil. People drug a lie to you and tell you the truth. <laughs> They'll tell you a lie and then turn around and swear they didn't even say it. <laughs> this is the world that we're living in. <laughs> and there ain't but one Savior. <laughs> That's Jesus Christ. <laughs> God bless you and may He keep you. <laughs>